Hello, gang. Professor McElroy here, uh, Digital Illustration. Uh, we're in week three, uh, learning module three. Really good job so far on the first two learning modules. Uh, this week, we're going to be navigating through some effects and style treatments uh, and some more enhanced uh, gradient applications and things to really dress up our two-dimensional uh, designs in a three-dimensional kind of space, creating that three-dimensional space on a two-dimensional plane. Uh, so we're going to be doing a little bit of a uh, little bit more illustration work tonight. Uh, I have a file that I shared in the announcement section that we're going to be downloading here in just a second. Uh, this week, we have a couple of chapter assignments. I'm going to scroll down here real quick to learning module three, uh, chapter five, six, and seven. Like week one, learning module one, if you complete your product illustration packaging, the front surface area or the primary faceplate of your packaging design, which we'll talk about tonight, you will be able to submit it for uh, these three chapter assignments. Please make sure that you read these. Uh, I actually really think as we start getting into like chapter six and seven, there are some beautiful vector student files shared for this book that you really should while you're reading along to get terminology and processes and just kind of reinforce what we're doing in Illustrator you should be playing around a little bit with the files that are provided for the chapter. It doesn't mean you have to submit those, but there are some really beautiful vector graphics that are attached to these chapter assignments in your student files that we downloaded week one. If nothing else, opening up the files and while you're kind of skimming through and reading and kind of making sure that you understand the application, the terminology, the process that we're learning, tinkering around with those vector files. They're beautiful, they're colorful, they're detailed, they're drawn very well. And sometimes for students kind of deconstruct to reconstruct is a really good way to learn the process that we're doing here as digital illustrators. So even though you may be reading along uh, kind of learning the terminology, reinforcing how it's teaching you. Like with the pen tool, it teaches you that clock face kind of mentality for curving lines in your chapter assignment this week. If nothing else, open up that floral design that's created in the chapter and play around with the nodes. Direct select them, bend the directional anchors, kind of play around with how that line is shaped and how you can manipulate that line. Of course, we're kind of drawing some new things and doing some different things this week in our illustration and our application. But like I said, these three chapters have some really beautiful detailed vector projects that if nothing else, as you're kind of reading through and referencing the images that are associated with the chapter assignments, uh, open up the file and play around with it. Even if you're not doing exactly what the step-by-step -step is telling you to do in the chapter, just manipulating the shapes, the colors, the drawings themselves really can help you learn kind of the best practices and the look and feel of what a vector drawing is when you open it up in Illustrator and manipulate it with your selection arrows, your direct select arrows, playing around with the properties panel of those shapes can really kind of help you learn and reinforce kind of what we're doing here. Really good job with the illustrations week two. Loved the t-shirt designs, the vector drawings. Some of you went in to do some gradient work, which is what we're gonna learn a little bit this week. We're gonna start playing around in those styles, those effects, those relationships in those fills and strokes that create a little bit more property to it, a little bit more dimension, a little bit more texture, a little bit more kind of detailed vector work in this simple program, getting us a little closer towards those vector packaging designs you might see at the food store. So let's see a tea or a coffee package with a coffee bean or uh, a food, uh, like a, a fig bar or a granola bar or a cereal box or any of the a rice package, any of those things you may have in your cupboard already that push the line between two-dimensional space and three-dimensional object. We're gonna start taking a look at some of those attributes tonight and how you can enhance your drawings and kind of push them a little bit further to a three-dimensional kind of space and a two-dimensional plane, because uh, that's what we're gonna be doing tonight. 
But like I said, that front face or the front plate or the main panel of your product illustration this week can be submitted for 3.4. 3.5 and 3.6. But as we go through our lecture tonight, I want to make sure I reinforce the fact that I want it to be a completed main panel that you submit as your project for this week. So it will need to have the product name, the unit size, the illustration. It should have a full background color to fill the panel that is the main panel of your package. So we wanna have a completed illustration. Uh, most of you did a completed illustration with all of the elements required for your uh, uh, t-shirt illustration for week two. So I'm not too worried about it. I just wanna make sure that we start to kind of finalize and finish our designs because as we've learned each skill, we've started to add new skills. So logos should now be combination marks where there's an illustration and there's typeset and it feels like a completed drawing, not just a separated object or a separated illustration or a separated drawing. We should start completing are designed so that they feel like they are what the final application should be, text and images, layered images, things that feel complete. If a background color is required, there's a background color associated with our drawing so that we complete what our thought is for our packaging or our logo or our spot illustration or whatever it is we're creating. So we're gonna push the envelope a little bit more in kind of a more enhanced environment of effects and style treatments and textures and that sort of thing as we draw this week. Of course, we're gonna start at ground zero and we're gonna kind of start from scratch and start using the pen tool and drawing and using shapes and doing the basic things we've heard, done the first two weeks. We're just gonna push the speed of that application a little bit as we start Start to go into what we now feel hopefully a little more comfortable with and push it into elements that we haven't explored yet. And so we can kind of keep that learning curve going. Of course, the more you practice, the more you draw, the more you explore, the more you download the student files and open and break apart and edit and manipulate the elements that are there, the quicker the curve will be for what is professional, what looks good, what I should be striving for from a drawing as we kind of explore the next evolution of digital illustration into something a little more finished, uh, something a little more finite, a li something a little more professional in its application. Please make sure you're uh, checking your email as well, or the announcement section at least a couple of times a week. I reached out to a couple of you about the illustrations you submitted last week to potentially show to the uh, KLCB president to see if anyone might be interested in exploring that option of maybe making that the event t-shirt design as we kind of move forward into the spring season when that event actually takes place. So make sure you're checking your email, uh, responding to me if I'm reaching out to you with yay or nay or whatever your thoughts are, because we're going to continue to try to push the envelope of professional application, you know, build that portfolio of real world solutions uh, so that when you graduate, whether it's just this class, whether it's a certificate, whether it's an associate or bachelor's degree, or if you're just taking a class to learn about digital illustration, I want to make sure that we're completing some projects that could be portfolio pieces for you, real world applications for you. So you can kind of see how taking something simple and completing it in Illustrator can become a professional application. So, okay, so let's go over to our announcement section. We're gonna download our file for this week. Uh, we're gonna do a little, uh, little drawing. So I'm just gonna download this. We're gonna talk a little bit about some different techniques and some different things this week. I'm just gonna drag this over to the desktop. You're gonna notice that I'm, uh, on my Mac. So I'm just dragging and dropping things because uh, that's what I'm really comfortable doing in my Mac environment. You might be on a PC, you might be doing short key commands a little bit differently, uh, but you should be reinforcing copying and pasting and opening and undoing and zooming in and panning across your document. Some of the basic techniques we have been doing uh, kind of since week one. So I'm going to go in and do file open. I'm going to go over to my desktop. Let's go over to the desktop. I'm going to grab my packaging uh, design here because we're going to start a little drawing. This is my center panel I just kind of placed in my document just to give me a reference 
of the shape of the carton or the packaging that I might be creating for my product or service. I'm not necessarily going to be 3D spatially placing this. I could open this up in Photoshop and do a perspective of my vector drawing as a smart object and really put it on here. But I'm using this panel in Illustrator just as a proportion of what the relationship of width versus height would be if I was creating this for a uh, juice carton, which is what I'm doing in this environment. So I get a perspective, right? So I know that the proportion of my label in essence is about this relationship, right? So I'm actually just gonna trace that. I'm gonna select it. For the sake of the process, I'm just gonna shade it in for now. So I know what the proportion of that panel is. There it is right there. So I need to know that as I'm gonna start developing my design because my design is more vertical than width, more height than width, right? So I gotta make sure that my concept, what I'm trying to do here has this kind of elongated relationship because I'm gonna need to have the name of it, maybe the units of my package down here and some illustration in the middle here referencing what I'm creating. So I'm gonna get into my layers here. I'm gonna lock my carton now just because I don't wanna be able to move the carton part of it. I just wanna be able to spatially kind of develop my relationship. Now, I decided for my project and for tonight's lecture, I'm gonna do something kind of like mango juice or something like that. So I went out and found just a little shapely illustration. I thought an iguana would be kind of cool. It's kind of rainforesty, kind of gives you that tropical environment, kind of the mango relationship of the juice and where the mangoes might be grown. So I'm gonna do kind of an iguana. I'm going to uh, kind of build an illustration around the iguana, maybe a mango, maybe uh, have the iguana kind of sitting behind or on top of the mango or something like that. I wanna be able to put my name up here somewhere. So if I went on, uh, cause I like to research, right? If I went on, let's just say I went out to Google, Google and did uh, mango juice just for reference, right? Just trying to figure out reference here. Go over to my images, right? We're immediately going to see, right? The brand, the illustration, the name of the juice, right? If I click on this, look at all the things that are included in the packaging of this thing. So you see, it's got the sugar, name, it's got the juice flavor, it's got the blends, it's got the verified. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in here and do command shift the number four. And I'm just going to screenshot some of the things I'm going to need for my label. So I'm going to screenshot that. And then I'm going to screenshot this because remember, my label has to have all the stuff that would be on a juice carton, right? And then I have the basic illustration. So I'm actually just going on and just screenshotting or print screening the basic elements of my mango juice label. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to minimize and here's all my screenshots that I did, right? So now I'm going to go back into Illustrator and I'm going to go in and place. So I'm going to go in and place, right? I want my carton to be as realistic as possible. So I'm just going to drop my mango label in there so I know the elements I need. Let's do file place. And you're going to notice I'm using the pasteboard for everything, right? So I'm just trying to get the basics of what my label is going to require. Uh, just so I know the bottom of my page needs mango flavor. It needs the blends. It needs the total number of ounces. It needs the calories. This one's kind of non-GMO, which is nice. I probably want to include something like that because I want it to be as professional and real as possible. So I'm just kind of screenshotting the different things that the label had that I was using. Okay, so now I at least know the elements, but I also know that the center of my label is my primary graphic, right? That's gonna take up most of my graphic. I know I'm gonna create a mango, I'm gonna maybe draw this iguana, give him some texture, maybe give him some glow or shadowing or gradient meshing or something like that. And that's gonna be my primary ear area here. And then I'll probably put my detailed information down the bottom here 
uh, of the other stuff I need. And I can do that with the pen tool. I can write most of this stuff with the pen tool uh, that I need to create down the bottom here. One other thing I think I wanna grab is I need a picture of a mango, right? Cause I've decided that I'm gonna do some kind of a mango with an iguana or something like that. So here's my mango. And so I can see it's kind of red to orange to golden green of some kind. So I'm gonna kind of screenshot this. And let's add that to the desktop because I wanna place that inside of my illustration so that I have my mango I have to draw to. So let's do file place and let's grab my mango. I'm gonna drop that in. So there it is. Uh, and I think I've decided, uh, let's go to my artboard. I think I'm gonna add another artboard and I'm gonna use the other artboard to create some of the elements that I need to create textually and relationship wise for my label. So I'm just gonna drop some of these things over here. So I have a reference of what I'm going to create, kind of how I'm gonna do it. Uh, and I'm gonna start kind of using some techniques we've done before, but I'm also gonna kind of reintroduce some new things. I think I wanna have some leaves that I'm gonna draw myself and I'm gonna use a couple of different techniques I can show you for kind of creating some interesting, unique uh, elements using basic shapes, basic effects, basic techniques. And then maybe we'll go in here a little bit and I'm gonna pen tool shape around this thing so that I can create. And I'm gonna lock these things these are the elements I imported in. I'm actually gonna lock that shape for now too, so that anything I draw, I draw on top of the elements that I have here. So everything is locked. Everything I create, I'm gonna create new. Uh, so we're gonna start, I think I'm gonna create a leaf pattern, some kind of leaves, and then maybe I'll draw the mango after that. I wanna start creating an illustration. If you search for mangoes, you get little leaves, you get these kind of odd oblong shapes. You get reds to, to oranges, to golden colors in these kind of two dimensional shapes that we need to create for illustration. And maybe I'll go in and everyone, I think now from weeks one and two can draw this iguana pretty easily. So we're gonna go in and maybe do a different technique that you didn't know existed for kind of creating some vector graphics once we create these things. So I'm gonna go in, I'm gonna use my star tool. I'm gonna to use my star tool because I'm gonna use that for kind of the dark green seams that are in a leaf. So I can start to kind of create my own shape, my own leaf uh, for my illustration. So I'm gonna go in and tap that and I'm gonna make the radius for this thing. Uh, I'm gonna make it like 23 and I'm gonna make it by like, uh, let's do three and let's do like 13 points. I'm, so I'm gonna do a bunch of points. I'm gonna make them real long, but narrow. I'm gonna click on that. I'm gonna hold down shift. I'm gonna draw this thing because now you can see what I've created. Um, I think I'm actually gonna go in. Now that I have my references, I'm gonna go in and add another layer. And on this layer is where I'm gonna start drawing some of my elements. And so I'm gonna move this over and now I'm gonna zoom in. And I don't know if you noticed, but when I placed these objects, I did not link them, I embedded them, I unchecked the link. So these are all embedded. So I actually don't need any of these things out here anymore on the pasteboard because everything I placed in here is now embedded in my document, which is a really beautiful thing if you have a larger storage, larger thumb drive, you're working off your desktop. But I don't know if you notice this, but you can actually go in and sample colors from your placed or embedded images that you have put into your Illustrator file. So I'm gonna go in and sample that green right there because I'm gonna kind of use that as kind of the beginning point. I could also sample from the stem that's in here. See, if I click on that, it'll give me the dark color. If I click on that, it'll give me the lighter color. If I click on that, so I can sample all the different shades of green that's in the stem, in the images, anything that I might have going on here. And I'm going to show you that now, if I wanted to, and I do, I'm gonna start creating some swatches for the different colors here. So I'm thinking I want my, uh, my leaf to be like uh, a lighter shade 
of this green. So I'm gonna make a swatch out of this. I'm gonna drag it down and drop it there. And then I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna use my eyedropper and I'm gonna sample one of the darker shades and I'm gonna drag that in. So my leaf is gonna be, uh, oh, sorry, I made that a swatch. I'm gonna take this swatch and I'm gonna drag it into my, uh, my palette here. So now I have a couple of swatches and when I sample the mango, I'm gonna sample from that as well, but I'm gonna go in here. Now you'll notice that this is a symmetrical kind of star I made from the star shape, but I can actually go in here and I'm gonna go into my effects and I'm gonna do a bulge warp. And I'm gonna do a bulge warp and I'm gonna stretch this thing way out, like way, way out. So I can start to do what the veins would be in a leaf. So you're gonna notice here now that this thing is stretched out. Like it started as this symmetrical, perfectly shaped, but I wanna kind of expand, bulge, explode this thing so it becomes its own unique shape. But when I select it, see how it still has the red outline of the original shape? Well, one of the keys with Illustrator is as we start to apply effects, a styles, attributes, different three-dimensional applications in a two-dimensional space, we can do multiple things, but we have to kind of do them one thing at a time. So I'm going to go in and kind of expand this thing. I'm going to copy and paste it and move a copy of it over here. And I'm going to go into my... properties. So you're going to notice that each one of these has a properties attached to it now. So watch when I go in here and I click on this and I change this one to the same bulge, but now vertical instead of horizontal. I'm going to click OK. So now you're going to notice that one is burst up and one is bursted out. Uh, I'm going to create two different leaves, which are going to become my leave patterns for my kind of mango that I'm drawing here. So just for the sake of the process, let's move that one out of the way. Now I have this one, it's expanded. It's kind of starting to be the shape that I want it to do. I'm gonna go in and I'm going to expand the appearance on this effect. So you're gonna notice in the property window over here, it has a warp, warp bulge applied to it. Well, watch what happens to these red shapes, which was the original star when I expand it. See how the effect goes away and now that thing becomes permanent. It becomes a permanent vector shape. It is no longer that symmetrical, beautiful star I made. It's this more organic shape. Well, that's really important now because if I wanted to do something else, let's say I wanted to bulge it again horizontally. So look at the original shape and now look at it. Look how it's starting to expand even more. I can actually apply a second bulge effect to this. And I'm actually gonna do that and do object expand appearance. And now look, it's back to this solidified fixated shape that was created. This is really important because now I can do in essence, three dimensional attributes to two dimensional simple shapes and make them far more complex than they were. Look at the little bow in the bend in the arm of the star to give it a more organic shape. It's now disconnected from its effect appearance, which is right here, right? Here are they all are right here. I can apply more to them, but it all Illustrator knows is that this thing is now organic. This thing was created in essence with your pen tool. It doesn't know anything different. It thinks you were the genius and drew this really beautiful organic shape with your pen tool, not created a symmetrical star, expanded it on a bulge effect twice to give it an organic shape that you're now gonna convert into a leaf environment. So now that's kind of the seam I'm gonna use for my leaf. Now I'm gonna use my pen tool and let's zoom out a little bit. Use my space bar to expand. And I'm going to create an organic leaf shape. I'm just going to do that. All right, zoom out. Remove that forward anchor. And I'm going to bow the second side out. And I'm not making it symmetrical because I want it to be organic. I want this leaf to be a little bit organic. And so I'm going to take that. I'm going to go into my swatches, right? I decided the leaf was going to be a light color. I'm gonna right click on it and send it to back. So you can start to see this organic shape that I'm creating for my leaf. 
but you're going to notice one thing, right? Okay, the leaf is fine. It's got a nice kind of asymmetrical, organic, natural curve to it. Looks like a leaf, but these things aren't lining up, right? I could move this thing. It's not perfect. I could take this and pinch it in and squish it a little bit to make it fit a little better. But I think I want to make this thing a perfect match. So I'm going to go in now and I'm going to select both of these objects and I'm going to center align them. So I'm gonna make sure they're center aligned. So you're gonna notice this thing is perfectly aligned, but look at this. This little thing doesn't match to the top up here. So I'm gonna go in with my direct select arrow and I'm just gonna move that line and snap it to the edge of my leaf. And I'm gonna do this organically. So I'm just gonna make sure each one of these points kind of snaps to the edge of the leaf. And I can even pinch that in and then pinch it out to snap because I want this thing to fit perfectly within the shape. Now, I don't have to align that to that seam. I could make it, you know, I could bring this and snap it down there if I wanted to, bow it out a little bit, bring this, snap that down a little bit. I have my smart guides turned on. And so I'm just kind of snapping this thing so that everything fits to the edge of this. So that's beautiful. Uh, I don't notice this thing has a weird little wiggle in it. I don't know that I necessarily want that. So let's take a look at this and see what is creating that little wiggle. It's that anchor. So I'm gonna move that anchor so that it doesn't have that pathfinder overlap, which is what that thing was. All right, so I kind of have that basic thing. With nothing selected, I think I wanna sample a darker green color too. So let's get in here and see if we can't find really dark green. Okay, so there's really dark green. So now I have the three shades of green that are in the stem of this thing. The reason I did that is because I actually, I think I wanna make this stem gradient in color or gradient in nature. So now we're gonna push the envelope of what means to be gradient. So I'm gonna open up my gradient palette and now you're gonna notice, I'm gonna pick center gradient. I'm gonna pick center gradient. What you'll notice now is white to black. So here's center gradient, white to black. And I can actually click, double click on that. And I'm gonna pick the center to be dark green. I'm gonna take my swatch. Let's, let's add a gradient down there because I wanna make this one dark green. And then I wanna make this one medium shade of green. And then I wanna make this one the light green. And so now you can start to see, I'm starting to add some three dimensional personality to. I could use, so let's go in here so I can show you the gradient tool. I can use my gradient tool to kind of manipulate this so let's move this out of the way so you can see what's going on here. To manipulate how this thing interacts as a gradient. So you can see it right there. See how I can burst it out. I can shrink it down a little bit. So I'm gonna pinch this in just a skosh to make sure that that thing is the way I want it. So I think that's good for the beginning of my kind of three-dimensional vine or seam. So let's go in here. I think I want to, and so I'm just starting to generate my leaf patterns, starting to use things that start to create three-dimensional space in a two-dimensional plane. Uh, so I know one thing is I want to, uh, I need to expand this, make it a shape, and I'm gonna use my eyedropper and select the gradient. And now you'll notice that this leaf now has a gradient pattern too. I'm actually gonna click and drag and select these two objects. I'm gonna hold down shift option. I'm gonna make this a little bit smaller so that I can address this leaf. So I'm gonna do shift option. I'm gonna shrink this down a little bit because I need to create my other leaf shape. And so I'm gonna bend that. And then I'm going to bend this. 
you'll notice I'm just creating an organic shape. I'm not really trying to make something that's perfect. So for now, I'm just gonna sample that yellow because these two leaves, I think I'm gonna make them the same color. I could invert them if I wanted and make one a light color and one a dark color, but let's just start playing with this just so you can kind of see my thought process as I'm kind of problem solving my concept. I had a basic concept for the lecture, but I'm just gonna free form it a bit as we're kind of drawing it as a class together. So you can see how my brain works from a thought process standpoint when I'm creating something for a client. So I'm gonna go ahead and snap these to the edge of this. And I think I'm gonna to try to make this where it's seamed right through the middle. So I'm gonna make that arm fit. Now I'm gonna do that and I can stretch that further and I can stretch it closer. I always like to pinch it in to pinch it out. So you can kind of see my thought process. I can get in here and make some of these seams bigger. See how I stretch that out a little bit. I like to do kind of opposite locations in something. So if I kind of make this a little bit thicker, I wanna make this a little bit thicker and I'm gonna make this a little bit thicker. So they balance each other out. And I think I wanna do that for the same thing. So let's do, oh, let's select this center dot, stretch that out a little bit. And you'll notice the smart guys, you're trying to get it to snap to a certain location, which means maybe I have to pinch this one in a little bit. And I also like to do things in odd numbers, odd shapes, uh, because if you do something like in one, three, five, seven, nine, kind of like odd numbers, it forces your eye. So like when you're looking at this, it's forcing your eye to pick here, maybe pick here, maybe pick here. It's kind of causing you a little kind of visual tension in your illustration when you start, start creating things uh, that are out of balance, aren't split perfectly 50-50, aren't twos and fours and sixes of things. So you'll notice a lot in design, if there's a color, it's applied maybe in three different locations, red in three spots of an illustration. And those three spots might be triangular in nature. So your eye goes upper right, middle left, bottom right, kind of creating a kind of a flow, a focal flow to your design, your illustration, or what you're trying to create so that your eye is constantly competing. You notice how this is kind of off-centered right here. So your eye's trying to fight back and forth between your illustration, kind of trying to figure out what it wants to do. I'm gonna go in here. I think I'm gonna apply uh, a leaf gradient to this as well, but I'm going to do, I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna pull off that one. So there's only two colors. And I think I'm gonna pick like this light color and then uh, I'm gonna double click here and I'm gonna pick this light color as well but I'm gonna actually gonna pick this color and then let's kind of see, if I double click here, let's go to our picker and I'm actually just gonna slightly tint the black area of this shade. So you see, I'm kind of tinting one side of this and watch if I go darker, see how it gets really dark there, but I'm only gonna add, I like to go around 10 to 15% shade difference when I'm kind of doing these tint adjustments. And so I could do it here too. I could double click on this one, go into my color. And what if I, it's already zero, so there's not a lot I can do with that. But what if I take it a little bit of the yellow out of it, just so that you can see. See if I crank it way down, how muted that gets. Now these are subtle, but if you actually look at packaging designs and you're at the food store, you'll notice subtle transitions like this that are created in color ranges. So I'm gonna eyedropper and I'm gonna sample that. So both my leaves kind of have the same treatment, same technique to the leaves. And so I'm gonna select this. I'm actually gonna do Command G and group it because now that I have the, the appearance expanded, see how it's not an object I can select. So as far as Illustrator knows, this thing was drawn with a pen tool. It doesn't know anything else. So I've got kind of the uh, treatments I want done to this. So I think I'm gonna shift option and shrink this down. And I'm gonna take this one, shift option and shrink this one down. I'm just gonna start doing 
a collage. Oh, don't want to do that because I want to keep it proportionate. So I'm just going to rotate it a little bit. I'm going to take the gradient, tuck it in over there, do shift option. And I'm going to start creating, in essence, a little feather of leaves. And so now I'm going to take this and rotate this one a little bit. And I'm going to drop it somewhere overlapped here. And I'm going to send that to back. So you can start to see the little collage I'm creating for my leaves. I'm going to rotate that, kind of drop it in there. Now, I think you're seeing that this is starting. See how there's an odd number? I'm going to kind of stick with an odd number here for my design. And I'm going to make sure that these things touch in the corner. See how that touches there? I actually think I need to invert this. So I'm going to take my direct select and I'm going to pick that. And I'm going to do this. I'm going to eyedropper that and make it dark. And I'm going to direct select my burst. And I'm going to eyedropper that and make it light. And so now you can see what I've created. And I've done it all with basically two shapes. I'm going to shift option, scale that up a little bit. I'm going to drop that in. All right, now you're going to notice my leaves. I'm starting to generate this, but I can always direct select a shape. So you see how this thing, this burst here has a little weird shape as it meets that leaf. I'm going to direct select that, then change to my selection arrow so I can rotate it a little bit. And I'm going to rotate it so that it falls. You see how it now falls inside of that seam? So if I zoom in, See how this thing now falls inside of that seam? And I actually think I want to make it a little bit wider so it fills in that space. See how it now fills in that space there so it's not awkward? These are like visual things you start to kind of recognize when you start doing a little more complex drawing that designers kind of try to make sure that they manipulate. You see how that now has come off the edge. I got to move that back in. So everything lines up and you'll notice now that this thing isn't on the edge. So I got to move that back. So let me pinch that in so I can pinch it out with my smart guides. And so now zoom out and you can kind of see the pattern that I'm starting to create with my leaves. And I actually created this leaf pattern with little to no drawing ability, right? I created a basic pen tool shape. I used the star tool and manipulated the star using effects. And you'll notice in effects, there's all kinds of things like different kinds of warps. Uh, you can arc it and bulge it and wave it. And you can actually take basic shapes and create far more complex things like butterflies and fish and all kinds of things by just using basic shapes and problem solving how you can create those basic shapes and apply effects to them to create unique shapes. And I did that for this little leaf pattern here. Now, I have the beginning of my leaf bundle created, an odd number. I kind of have this curved shape going here because I'm visualizing that this mango shape is gonna sit in front of it right here. And I'm then gonna put my guana somewhere here and I'm gonna write mango juice below it. So my label is taking shape, right? My label starting to take shape. And I can even take that one step further, unlock the panel, which is here. I'm gonna copy and paste it. I'm gonna lock that one back on the packaging and I'm gonna bring this one over and I'm going to invert it so it only has a stroke. I'm gonna stroke it on the outside and I'm gonna make it bigger and I'm gonna do shift option. I'm gonna scale it up. That way I know proportionately what I'm shooting for. I'm gonna send that to back. So there you go. So now you can see that I'm trying to create an illustration that's gonna basically fit in these proportions, right? So my mango leaves are gonna sit somewhere like that. And my mango is gonna take up about this space here. And then I have an iguana either up here or down here. If I put them on the ground in front of my mango, then I can put maybe a mighty mango or mango juice above it. And I can put all of this kind of detailed information I need behind it, but I'm just starting to build it. But I can use 
this photo as a template, right? Because this is a really organic shape of mango. So why don't we use this as a template for our mango that we're going to create. So I'm gonna draw this and curve it. So you can see what I'm doing. I'm just moving ever so slightly along the shape of this thing, knowing that this thing's gonna bow out and it's gonna bow in a little bit. So there's that. It doesn't have to be perfect, right? We talked about this before. We're creating in essence an organic shape. So I'm actually gonna let that bow a little bit and bring it back here and kind of bend that a little bit. And so now just for the sake of the process, there it is, right? You can see it. It's actually a pretty good shape for a mango. So I'm gonna move this, I'm gonna drag this. And so for a proportionate standpoint, I'm gonna do shift option. I'm gonna make this about the size I'm gonna need it to be for my packaging. And I'm holding down shift option because I want this thing to fit inside of my proportion. So let me just fill it in for a minute so you can see you know, the size of this thing as it relates to the size of my packaging, right? Proportionately, I need it to be something about that shape, right? Because there's my mango right there. I can add a stem if I want at the end of this thing to make that thing feel a little bit more. I think I want the leaves behind it. But now I need to create some more swatches. I need to create the gradient transitions of my mango so that I can regenerate what this three-dimensional object looks like in a two-dimensional space. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use my eyedropper. I'm gonna sample that dark red. I'm gonna drag and drop that down. Then I'm gonna sample kind of this middle tone, which looks like that. And I'm just gonna sample a bunch of different shades of what this mango is. So it's got oranges, it's got reds. The end of it's kind of like this yellowish green color. Let's sample that. I'm gonna drop it. You see how I'm kind of going dark to light. So I want my shades to kind of be dark to light. So what is the darkest color shade I have here? Well, it's about that shade or the other one. Um, I'm actually gonna create this by putting a white shape and kind of blurring a glare on my shape. So this, I think that captures a lot of the really beautiful shades of this. And so now I'm gonna take this now that I have its proportion and I'm gonna move it a little bit closer because I wanna use that as kind of my inspiration for creating this. Knowing that I'm only playing with the gradient transitions of this uh, mango. I'm gonna add some speckle to it. I'm gonna add some shimmer or shine to it using a little bit of a glare. I'm gonna do all the wax treatments to this. All I care about is red to an orange shade to kind of this mango kind of golden yellowish, brown, greenish brown color. Okay, so in order to do that, I'm gonna switch over to my gradient mesh. And my gradient mesh is a way to create a gradient that blends between ranges of color. So watch what I do if I tap my cursor there. It starts to give me a gradient and so I'm just gonna add a bunch of points here uh, and we can kind of play it by ear as we create this thing. But I'm gonna go in here and drop a few gradients along this. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit closer so you can see exactly what I'm doing. I'm gonna drop that in there. I don't know, maybe one there. And so now I'm starting to create that shape. And I also need one that bulges along the top here I probably need one kind of in the middle. And then I'm gonna, let's see, one, two, three lines. I'm gonna do about three lines bending this way as well. So let's drop one there, maybe drop one on the edge here. And so now you're gonna notice that this thing has like all kinds of points associated with its shape. And I can actually use my direct select tool and I can get into my gradient now. So see, I'm in my gradient here and I've got my color selected. Uh, so let's go back here. Uh, let's go into our swatches and I'm gonna double click and you're gonna notice that I'm in 
this particular point shade of gradient. And I can pick on the color range that I selected. So let me zoom in now so you can really see what's going on, right? So I've got reds along the edge here. So all of these points along the edge need to have red. So I'm actually just gonna click my mouse and do direct select and point and click all of these reds. And you're gonna notice that one, make sure that that has the red. So let me use my space bar and pan here. So it's red along all of these edges blending into orange. So here's a really good kind of, I don't know, best practice. I'm gonna take my direct select and I'm gonna drag a selection box right through the middle. Cause I know the middle needs to be like this color. And then I know the edge of this thing needs to be like this color. And then I know kind of these middle sections need to be like this color. And so now I'm going to start going in and let's take a look at our thing here. So we have some oranges, we have some goldens. So let's start picking some of these just to see what we can blend. Let's pick like that color. I'm going to start picking different shades of color. So let's pick this one. Let's get in here for this. Pick this one, get in here for that. And you're going to see that I'm starting to pick different shades And so let's zoom in, <laughs> I'm use my space bar and you'll see the points I'm selecting. So let's pick that, pick this one. And I'm gonna work my way around this mango just so that you can see, see how the shades are changing. Watch if I introduce a darker color just so that you can see the difference. See how that's starting to get a darker shade. So now when I zoom out, See, I'm starting to get kind of this darker shade along the edge here that's blending in with the lighter shade. And so now I'm gonna start just building what I need to build here. So let's zoom in. I kind of like that darker shade. So let's introduce the darker shade into the entire middle of this thing. Introduce the darker shade. but I'm gonna take the very edge of this and add red to a couple of spots because the red does actually bleed under the bottom of this thing a little bit. Uh, I actually think maybe, I think I'm gonna add an extra line there so that the extra line is this shade so that my red is only at the very bottom of this blend. So you can see it right there. All right, so let's do that. Let's pick this. Let's see what it looks like with the lighter shade. All right, so you can start to see my mango is starting to get seams. See how it's a little bit darker there too. So I think I need to select this one and add the darker shade to that. All right, so let's just take a look at this thing. How far does it, oh, it's a pretty big swatch of darker. So let's take this one too. And do that. And so now you can start to see my shape is taking shape here. So we have, I gotta bleed some oranges into the middle here. I'm gonna take this, uh, let's take that. Let's just see what we can do. What if we make this a darker shade? So, okay, so let's zoom out a little bit. And I'm gonna deselect for a minute just so that you can see what I'm doing here. See how the, the lighter color is gonna bleed across here. So let's zoom in. I'm starting to just build what makes sense to me based on the photo, the color scheme of what we have going on. Do that. I think maybe even this one. 
needs to have some of that. All right, zoom out. You could start to see that shade is blending in, but you're gonna notice that this area right here, I think it all still needs to be darker because I only have light right along the edge there. So let's get in here. And I think I gotta tint this darker. I hate to admit it, but I think it needs to be darker here. Even on this little edge right here, because the light creeps in over here. All right, so let's introduce some more darker. And darker. All right, so let's get this point. We got to make sure that it's darker on that edge and here. All right, so zoom out. You can start to see the shading that I'm doing in here. All right, I need red there. I need some orange to kind of introduce over here. And then I'm gonna start adding some highlights. I'm gonna add some texture to this. We can always go back in later and introduce some more. I'm actually gonna hold down shift. I'm just gonna select a bunch of these points because I know they all need to be orange. That. All right, and I think this one needs to be orange too. I actually think this and this need to be orange. And remember, I have different shades of orange. So this and this, make that orange. And then I think somewhere in the middle here, I need it to be a slightly different shade of orange. And so now you can see what I have going on here. I'm starting to introduce these different shades of colors into it. So I'm just gonna move it over here because now I'm gonna start doing just what feels right to me and a little bit less about what this image is and just what feels right to me. So I'm gonna do that. I'm going to, uh, let's park this thing where I need it parked. And so now you can start to see the shape that is taking shape here. Um, I have a couple of shapes here. So I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna draw, I'm gonna draw kind of a smudgy shape, kind of a blur shape to this. I'm gonna make that white. I'm gonna move it over here and shift option. I'm gonna scale it down and drop it in here. I'm gonna go into my properties menu and I'm gonna lighten this, right? I can crank this down so you can see the colors behind it, right? It's starting to blend in a little bit. So let's zoom in, drop that in. And I'm gonna go in and do, uh, I'm going to do a blur treatment to what I have going on here with my shape. So let's crank it up. So you see how that thing is starting? So now let's do this. starting to highlight the shape. And so now let's zoom out a little bit. You can start to see the shape. I'm creating these color variations or these color transitions. And you'll notice this one's a little too drastic right here. See how it's stepping itself? I need to make that oranges so that it blends in a little bit easier. But while I'm doing my highlights, I wanna go in here and create basically this little organic shape that I have going on here. That shape, drag this, hold down shift option, gonna bring this in here. I'm actually gonna use my eyedropper and sample that. So it gives me the right amount of opacity and I'm gonna apply the same blur that I did to that one. So take a look at what's happening here. I'm starting to create more three-dimensional space in a two-dimensional plane. I'm starting to create this thing that is going on, but I think I need to get in here and I'm gonna zoom in a little bit and I need to make some of these shapes orange. I can see now that my color isn't quite right on that. So I'm just gonna shade this out a little bit and do that and know that I can always 
double click on this and add some color to it. So you see how I made that darker right there? So if I needed to, I could, I can actually take this and make it a swatch, introduce some, even some different shades. So you see how that's now becoming a thing? Okay, so now I have that. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna copy and paste this shape because I actually wanna have a version of this thing that has no, so I'm just gonna fill that in. And I'm gonna add a stroke to the outside of this thing. So let's add a stroke to this. Uh, let's uh, make it uh, dark green. So let's, I'm gonna put that out there right this second, just so that it's off on its own little shape there. Okay, all right. Now let's take this and I think, let's zoom in a little bit so we can see what we have going on here. I think I want to maybe just do a soft blur of my color blend, just so that you can see what happens to it. So you see how my shape is starting to blend itself together. I can always expand the appearance. So I freeze that thing. So there it is, kind of has its basic blur applied to it. All right. And so let's, let's now, let's go in and let's, mm, let's, I'm trying to decide what I want to do from a texture standpoint. So you see this grain texture that is happening. Let's do, I want to undo the blur for a second because I think I want to. So let's do that. And let's go in. Oh, let's think about this for a second. Uh, what kind of texture do I want to apply to this thing? Because it's going to make it black and white. So I've got to release my... I'm going to do... Watch what I'm going to do. I'm going to convert this thing into an image now. So you see, I converted that into its kind of image shape. So I'm going to go in now. And let's go into properties. And I'm going to now, now that I have this blended the way I want, I'm going to go in and do uh, a trace of this, do a high fidelity trace of this. You're going to notice something. I now created this thing. So I'm going to park this thing now. I created this thing into a drawing of the gradient that I did. And the reason I did that is because I'm gonna get in here now and clear out the background. And I'm gonna bring this thing over and you're gonna see this now gradient shape that I created for my mango that I have my glows on top of. And then let's go in and add some texture to this thing. Let's get in. I don't know, do I wanna crackle it? Do I wanna grain it? I mean, I think it's grain for texture. So let's crank it down so you can see the different intensities of this thing. And do that. So now you can start to see the texture that's happening on this thing. Actually, I like the crackle better. So let's go in and do kind of a crackle of this texture. So there it is. I'll zoom this out. Starting to get my mango. I'm gonna group my mango now. So I'm gonna hold down shift. I'm gonna group that. Actually, before I group it, I'm gonna make a copy of the mango. Copy and paste, move it over here. So now I can group this, 
group it. I can always copy and paste an object right on top of it if I wanted, but I'm gonna get in here now. I'm gonna add a stroke to this. And look at the texture vein that was created by adding a stroke. The reason I did that is because I actually want to go, go on here and change, uh, let's change the opacity. Crank it way down. So you can start to see some seams in my mango. Give it a little texture. All right, now. Got the beginning of that thing going on. I'm gonna take this now and I'm gonna select the interior stars. See the interior stars of this thing? Let's zoom in a little closer. Interior stars of this. Let's grab that, hold down shift, grab this, hold down shift. Let's see if it'll let me grab, let me zoom in a little closer. I want to be able to grab all three of those because now I'm going to go in and I'm going to do uh, uh, inner glow. But instead of it being a glow, I'm going to make it an inner shadow. Watch what happens. So let's go to like a uh, point, point 0.25. Uh, gotta be a little bit bigger, point 0.5, just to give this a little dimensionality to it. And so you'll notice I've got some seams going on now. So I wanna take this, take this, hold down shift, take that, and I'm gonna apply a drop shadow to just the leaves. Uh, let's uh, add a drop shadow. Make that about two. Make that about two. Make that about three. Make this about 35%. Ah, I gotta be a little darker based on the object I'm drawing. And so now you can see that. I'm starting to think maybe I want my leaves on top of my mango. So let's do that. Zoom them out a little bit. Let's take these shapes. Shift. Move those to there. Maybe shift option make them a little bit smaller. Okay, I got the beginning of my thing going on here. Uh, just for the sake of the process, I'm gonna apply a drop shadow, very soft. Let's get in here to make sure I have the right thing selected. There we go, but I actually think I need to go in here and figure out what I have going on. So let's, let's make that one two point uh, the blur. Uh, let's make the blur big time. Let's really soften this thing up a little bit. Make this like 35%. Got the beginning of our thing going on here. All right, I got my leaves. Got that thing going on. All right, let's, uh, let's get in here and let's get into our properties. This thing, I don't know, do we need a stroke on this thing? Let's take this, mm, I don't need anything with that right this second. So let's zoom in. Let's direct select. 
I don't know if I love the inner glow on that. So I think I'm gonna remove that from the leaves. I thought I was gonna like those, but I don't love them now. And so now I have my mango, I have my leaves started. Uh, textually at this point in time, I think I would go in and create some of my elements textually. So let's do just for the sake of the process, uh, mighty mango. Let's uh, make it bigger, right? That's gonna be down there. Uh, what size, what kind of typeface do I want? I think I'm gonna do Avenir, but I'm gonna do uh, condensed. So it's tight, condensed. Let's make it uh, bold, but I want to make the word mango bigger than mighty. I'm gonna make that bigger. I'm going to, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, I use my scroll bar and sometimes I do that by mistake. So let's do that. Let's get into the properties. Oh, I do not want it to have a stroke. So let's take our fill color. Uh, let's pick one of our oranges. Let's just go with that right now. I don't want a stroke. I wanna change my, so let's scroll down here. Let's make sure that our leading is tight. So just for the sake of the process, I'm gonna kind of drop that in there now. Uh, I'm gonna type in the other text I need as well, just so that I have a blend, a blend of five juices with, Well, they do all caps, so maybe I'll just use all caps. Blend juices with added enter ingredients and other natural, natural flavors. And that needs to be not, let's go regular. Let's change the typeface. So it's gonna fit something like that. I think I'm gonna go like with a dark green, one of my green shades. Do something like that. I'm gonna select these two things and make sure that they're center aligned. So you're seeing that I'm, kind of mimicking some of the elements of the label I selected so that I'm consistent with scale and proportion. It's a really easy way to make sure that scale and proportion is appropriate. Uh, I'm gonna go in here and copy and paste this. And I'm gonna use my text tool because I'm gonna insert a symbol, which is a registered trademark which is what is right there on the side of mango. And so now let's go into properties. I need to make this like itty bitty. So let's zoom in. Here's my registered mark. Let's make it bigger so I can place it a little bit easier. So here it is, move that on over, zoom, zoom. It goes above the O. I'm gonna place it right there. I make sure that I ha have the same registered mark. Um, I'm gonna make a copy and paste of the text block to know that that's the typeface I'm using. But remember last week we talked about outlining our type. So let's create an outline and I'm gonna group this now because this is finished typeset. So now if I scale it down, I'm gonna scale it together. And so now I kind of know that goes there. 
uh, let's see what we have here, 84 fluid ounces. So let's zoom in. And I'm actually gonna stick in the same typeface. I'm gonna stick in the same typeface. And so I'm gonna do, that's 64. 64 fluid ounces, parentheses, two quarts, parentheses, space 1.89 liters. And you may notice that this is actually a little bolder than that. So I'm gonna go into my typeface and this is just being true to type hierarchy. So you see how, so I'm gonna center this on that object. I'm being true to, see how that's a heavy bold, this is a condensed and this is a smaller size, but bold, because you wanna read the flavor, you wanna read the size, and then you wanna read the description. So I'm gonna take that, that's fine for now. I'm gonna create outlines. I'm actually going to take this and ungroup it for a minute because I wanna take this and this and group it. And so now if I select that, hold down shift, select that, hold down shift and select that, I can center those things all together. And so that's the basic size of my label. And so now you're gonna notice these things that we need to do. And so I'm gonna create my shape. So let's just bow that, hold down shift, bow that, hold down shift. And I need to align these two things. Let's align that like that. And then I'm gonna switch it so that it's the other, it's the outline, not the fill. And so I'm just showing you problem size, how I work through all the different little tools we're learning to use. So here's my little shape. So there it is. So now I can take these things, hold down shift. And I'm gonna move this up so it's a little bit closer. I'm gonna to have to shrink this down a little bit because I gotta be able to fit. It doesn't have to be exactly the same. I actually think I'm gonna put uh, GMO over here and maybe calories over here, but I'm trying to be as true as I can oh, to the shape. So I'm gonna drop it in over here. So let's zoom in. All right, so I need 150. So 150, oh, 150, enter. Oh, uh, calories, enter per eight FLOZs serving. And here's a really good way to practice visual hierarchy of typography. So watch what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna select it all and make sure it is the same typeface. So we want it to be Avenir. And so now I'm gonna highlight this and I'm gonna make it heavy and I'm gonna make it bigger because it needs to be kind of like the same width as calories. So then I'm gonna highlight calories and I'm gonna make the leading tighter. So I'm gonna do that. Actually, the 150 isn't as wide, but it's close. So I'm gonna do that. And I'm just mimicking the label. And so let's do that, highlight that. And I need it to be about the same width. So let's do that. And then I'm gonna crank it up. 14 point, crank it up. Yeah. About like that. And let's highlight this, that's regular. Highlight this, it's regular. But I think I'm actually gonna make it medium. I'm gonna make this medium. So it mimics the thickness. See how it's consistently thick? See how this is now consistently thick? I'm gonna pick that and use my eyedropper to make sure I use the same orange and pick that. 
So now I'm gonna trace this, watch, I'm gonna right click it and I'm gonna outline it. And I'm outlining it so that I scale this down to fit in my shape. So you see how I'm now kind of just scaling that down to fit in my shape. Yes, it's not exactly the same top to bottom as that because it's a different typeface. If I really needed to, I could actually just pinch that down a little bit, pinch this up a little bit, and it would be very similar in nature to that one, which you can see right there. So I'm zooming out. And so now, oh, I gotta move my little thing back over. So it's right about there. So I gotta make sure that's grouped. Group that, that's fine, that's fine. So now I can collect all these and then group them together. And I can bump this over a little bit. And then, all right, so I can move this up. Oh, I wanna group these two things, group them. And I can actually do shift option and make this ever so slightly bigger. And I'm gonna move that over there. And now I'm gonna zoom in and see this little thing here. I'm gonna mimic this, use my pen tool. I spend a lot of time drawing over things clients give me because they want me to recreate something that they had another designer do that they no longer have the file to. They want me to redraw something. And so I'm gonna do that. So there's my shape. Use my eyedropper, select the green. And then I'm gonna take my shape tool, rectangle shape tool. I'm gonna do this. In essence, that is that eyedropper, the light color. Send that to back. So now my grass is over the top of it. I'm gonna take this. I'm gonna draw the same shape I had there. Use my eyedropper, sample that dark blue. This and this, send to back. So I have that and that. And now I'm just gonna mimic the type to watch. Non, enter, G, M, O, enter, P, R, O, J, E, C, T. And so now these two things have to be bold. They have to be as wide as the word project, which you can see right there. I need this to be closer to the word G, M, O. This needs to be white. So let's move that over. I'm going to trace it and do shift option, scale this down. So you're going to notice that mine typography is a little bit narrower than the one for the actual sample. Don't do that. Do not stretch it to fit into that shape. I'm just gonna make mine a little smaller. Do not squish disproportionately, which means stretch something that isn't supposed to be stretched. I could always go in and modify this a little bit if I needed to just so that it fits a little better in the proportion of my label, which is perfectly fine. So if that's the case, I can use direct select and select those holding down shift and bump this so it lines up. I could even select those with direct select and make sure they align. All right, so let's see how we're doing. I need verified, I need the word verified, verified. Make that demi bold, drop that there. I need to make it a little smaller so it fits in my stripe. And you're actually gonna notice the kerning or the space between the letters 
is big and that's adjusted right here. So see if I do like 200, I can actually drop that right into the spot it's supposed to fit in. Now, I don't think it's quite 200. I'm gonna manually go down to like 180 and kind of center this thing. And then I can outline that. So look at how I'm just plugging along and re non GMO project.org. Not, oh, non GMO project.org. But this has normal. This is probably a medium type face. I need to shrink it down, fit it down there roughly. Make it like that. I'm gonna use my eyedropper and make it that color. If I wanted to, something that would really be classy or classic would be if I went in and made this. have a slight gradient. See, I'm cranking this. And then I could take this and slide it that way a little bit and it would mimic the gradient of that logo. All right, so here's my thing. Let's make sure all of the type is outlined and then I'm gonna group it. I'm going to move it over here. I want to center it on that. Shift option, make it a little smaller so it fits in there. Zoom out and you can see what I'm starting to do to create my label. Now, my label needs to be flat. So I'm just going to stretch this out and make this uh let's just make it that color for the time being so i can delete this one bring this one back and this is my label that i have going on so far and so let's make that a little thicker and so i'm just using the tools oh that's a little too dark that we've been learning through the process. I'm just now putting them in a, a professional application. All right, so now, oh, they have no sugar added somewhere here too. So let's zoom in. So you see what we have going on? It has a code number. I wanna make sure I include that too. So the first thing I'm gonna do is type in cap locks, no sugar, oh, added. You're going to notice that it's left aligned. I'm going to make it dark purple, which is what this color is. I'm going to boost it up a little bit and I'm going to boost in my spacing ever so slightly to mimic what that thing is. It's also heavier. So I'm going to do that. And it has a little bit of spacing between its letters. So there it is. So just for the sake of the process to mimic the size of this, I'm going to scale that up. And I'm going to Tighten that up a little bit. All right, so I'm going to take this, draw a big shape. Let's move that out of the way. Let's sample the green. Let's send it to back. So I have this, park that in there. For the time being, I'm going to group it. See that little stripe through there? That stripe is a shine on the label. I could actually make a white, watch what I do, make a white 
and I'm going to crank down the opacity. And I'm going to bring this to front. And so now I'm creating, in essence, that stripe. See, it's right there. So it makes it look like that thing is being highlighted. If I crank it up a little bit, maybe 33%. You can see it a little bit better. There it is. And so I'm going to now create outlines with my type. And I'm going to group this. Zoom out. And here is my no sugar added. Now, I always like these as like a flag on the package. So watch if I do and I crank this down. See how it makes it a wave? And if I expand my appearance, now it just looks like a permanent wave. And then I can move this into my label. If I wanted to, I could add a drop shadow. Let's tighten up this blur a little bit, make it 2 point, 2 point, 2 point. Make this like 50% so you can really see the shadow over the top. So I actually think that flag version of that shape is a really easy way to make this look bit much more dynamic. See how it's kind of got that dynamic effect to it, but I'm copying every single thing on this particular label. So I make sure that my label as, is as professional as I can make it. All right, it's actually a dark gray. So let's just pick like that shade. It's actually just regular, like regular typeface and it's really tight like that. Maybe zoom out a little bit. So I need that code. So I'm gonna rotate this. I'm just going to drop it in right there for the time being. I know I need, I know I need to outline that and I'm going to have to adjust some things. I'm just going to park that over there. And I'm going to select these two things. And I'm going to move them down a little bit. And then I can select these things. And I'm going to group all those things and move those down a little bit. So you can see what I have going on here. I'm starting to create, I gotta go in and work on that mango a bit and start playing around with this stuff a little bit more, but for the sake of the process of mimicking the label so that we get something that is professionally applied. See how I'm really starting to create something that has some dimension to it. It is professional in that all of the elements that are on this label are on my label, the name, the description, the ounces, any verified, any calorie count, any extra information from what I'm using. For your packaging design, you can go into your cupboard and you can maybe take something you like, like maybe you're a coffee drinker and you have K-cups and you wanna do the front fascia the front packaging of a particular Dunkin' Donuts, I don't know, Green Mountain, any of those coffee things, you can create a bean, you can uh, draw the elements, the type, creating everything in vector, which is what we're doing here. But leave no page unturned as far as the elements go. We wanna make sure everything that's on there is what is on the label. But now that I have my basic elements started here, I've got all the elements that I need. I'm gonna go into my layers and I'm gonna unlock. Actually, I can keep them locked. I'm just gonna hide them. So now I'm not as controlled 
by what I have on my page. I can spend a little more time kind of creating my design the way I want it. So we got that. Now let's get over here to Mr. Iguana. Mr. Iguana, he's right there. I'm gonna unlock him. Now we could go in and do a pen drawing all the way around this entire shape and create our own version of our iguana. But I don't know if anyone has ever shown you the ability to trace line art or trace photographs. You can actually trace this thing and make it a vector shape. So watch what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go in here. I know it's only one color, but I'm gonna pick three colors to see if it traces this thing as a completed shape. Oh, see how it has a watermark on it? I'm trying to avoid the watermark. There we go. So it removed the watermark for me and I'm going to expand this now. And look what happened. I'm gonna go in here and select this and move it. All of these shapes actually got traced I'm just direct selecting the background and deleting it. This guy is now vector. So take a look at this. So what if I wanted now to fill in his scales with the colors I sampled? So I'm gonna hold down shift and select all of these scales. Spacebar. This is where the ability to doodle sketch a little can really be a benefit to the illustrator if you're comfortable in an illustrating environment. Actually, when I was in school, I was actually really good friends and room, my roommate was a pencil drawler. Oh, and we would, he would doodle sketch some things I would clean them up in Photoshop, trace them in Illustrator, convert them to vector objects and create t-shirt and logo illustrations with him and for him based on his doodle ability and my Illustrator ability. So let's go in here. It's crazy, right? So look at this, I don't know, what, what color do we wanna make this dude? What color should his nails be? Oh, I got a little shape there I gotta fill in. I could even go further and make every other spike darker. So you see this to really add some personality to this guy. I sampled all those ranges of colors from my photo so that when I did my label, it gave me the opportunity to have tons of color options that all work within a color range because I sampled it from a photograph. So I knew the colors all worked together because the colors already worked. So let's zoom in. So here's my little iguana dude that I created from the image. I'm gonna scale him down and I'm actually gonna move him over now because he's going to hang out. I'm gonna copy him and delete him and I'm gonna make sure he is on, so I'm gonna lock that layer again. I wanna make sure he's on the vector layer. So let's paste him, zoom in, zoom in. Let's make sure he's one solid shape. I actually need to now, I think, move this stuff up 
So let's let's select all of these things minus that. I'm gonna move it up a little bit because I need this dude to be underneath. I actually think I need him to be facing the other direction so that that green doesn't interact with the leaves too much. And so take a look at this little guy. What if I move him down and I put mighty mangoes in front of his tail? Now you can see what I have going on. Uh, I don't love his outline. So you see how he has this really dark outline. If you direct select that, you can actually select that as its own shape. And I can make it a lighter shade. Or I can delete it all together, but I don't wanna delete it. I think I just wanna lighten that shade a little bit. So there he is. Let's, I don't know, let's add, let's add an effect to this guy now. So watch what happens if we arch him. He gets a little fat. Well, that's not gonna work. Let's try, can we give him a little bulge? Vertical bulge. Chubby him up a little bit. Let's click okay. Oh, I like that, he's a little thicker. So let's expand his appearance. And so now we can, I don't know, let's uh let's do a soft outer glow and multiply, which means it blends in with the background. But well, let's outer glow him in one of our shades. There we go. I'm gonna soften it up and make it smaller. And so there he is. And if you zoom in a little bit, he has a very soft dark green outer glow, which really works for what we have going on. But we have a problem here. Let's ungroup this and I'm gonna select just this text. So let's edit copy and edit paste in place, which means it's gonna go right on top of that. But I'm gonna switch it and give it a white stroke with no fill. And I'm gonna make the stroke the outside of the letters. And let's make it a little thicker. So that's too much because we still wanna see his tail. We just wanna make sure the letters aren't illegible in essence, based on what we have going on here. So I'm just gonna do a little bit of an outline on there. Let's zoom in a little bit. Mm, I need to see how that's touching. I'm going to, first thing I have to do is I'm going to, let's undo that because I need to take this. See, there it is right there. I need to take this and I need to select that. Hold down shift. See how I have just that selected. I need to merge these things. So you see how that overlap now does it make a weird line there? And so now it cuts out correctly. And so let's go here. Can we go two point? Maybe. All right, so we got our mighty mango going on. Let's, let me show you something real quick. I could have actually live traced the mango. So watch this. I'm gonna unlock that. So you see the mango right here? 
watch the properties of high fidelity trace of a photograph. So this is a photograph, right? And this is my gradient attempt at it. Live trace, photograph, high fidelity. Watch what happens. So it's been converted into a vector graphic. Does it still look like a photograph? Pretty close. Watch what happens when I expand it. So look at that. It created a vector version. So watch when I zoom in. A vector version of all of those little shapes. So now watch if I just direct select the background. Delete, delete. That's a refresh, it looks like. What is that? Wait. So now watch. I did all that work with that gradient. Delete. Bring. Oh. Let's uh, ungroup. Delete just the mango. Take this. Shift option. Object arrange send to back. And that's a vector object. I just live trace the photograph. And look how real that looks. That is completely scalable. But it's a vector graphic. So now you see how a lot of those packaging designs have what appears to be so real, super real fruit, vegetables, produce, images, but they're scalable to the packaging. It's because the high fidelity photo trace, the photographs that they take of the product, coffee beans, uh, strawberries for things that are strong, but that's a style, right? Not every strawberry on strawberry packaging looks like a photograph. Sometimes it looks like an illustration of a strawberry. So what does that mean for the iguana? Watch this, file, new window, iguana photo, white background. Mm, let's go to large image. Let's see what we have here. There are some funny looking iguanas, aren't there? Look at this dude. That's a stock image. So let me see if I can find one. That's just a nice picture of an iguana. Actually, this is Pexels and it may be free. So let's download it. Now watch what I'm gonna do. Drop that. I'm just showing you different techniques. Watch this, drop it in there. Holy smokes, look how big it is. Uh, let's go into scale. Let's make this 20%. And so there's our little iguana dude. All right, so a couple of things you gotta know about the iguana dude. Watch if I live trace him. I'm gonna embed him and I'm gonna high fidelity trace him. And it's telling me, oh my gosh, this is a big picture. This is gonna take a minute. Let's expand him and look at that. This is a photo now. And so just for the sake of the process, let's move my sad little guy out of the way. And let's do shift option. Now, something you need to know is that this object All right, I have to take him to the edge. See that? But watch what happens when I send him to back. 
you see that part of the mango, it's bleeding into. So what I would have done is go in here. I could do one of two things. I could go into Photoshop and, oh, go into Photoshop and make that background white or just for the sake of the process. I'm not gonna do this whole thing because it would take a minute. So let's find the iguana. Let's lock him for a second. Let's say I used a pen tool and I traced this iguana, right? The shape of the iguana. And I took this and selected both the shape and the iguana. I could do a clipping mask. And you see how I cut that out of that image? Now it's transparent on the background. And I could have sat that iguana right on top of that uh, mango. The only way that would work is if I went in and trace, did a perfect trace of this iguana with the pen tool. I need this shape. So if I went in with my pen tool and traced the shape of the iguana and then live traced it and expanded it and selected both the outline of the iguana and the live trace of the iguana, I could have cut him out into the perfect shape that would have fit in front of my mango. I mean, I could cheat it and I could go here and just say that I want the iguana to be behind the mango. So watch what happens. I'm gonna zoom out just so I can select the things I need to select. Watch if I just move that stuff up and I move the iguana down. And if he was on a white background, he would blend right in to the packaging. Right, I could move him up. I mean, there are things I could do. I could sample the gray that is the background of the iguana and I could blend him in so that he blends in with the background. I could do a gradient and sample from that color to that color and blend the iguana in. But the key is that the iguana is cut out. So a, what's called a clipping mask, right here, is how you, so I'll do it with the, uh, I'll do it with the mango real quick, just so that you get an idea. Maybe the egg, egg, mango was like a perfect shape like this. Watch what happens. If I take this shape, stretch it out a little bit, and I select the shape and the mango, I can cut the mango out and it's perfect. So watch when I bring these to front. It's perfect. I can even put a shadow on the mango. And I cut the mango out of that shape and its vector. See how it looks like little shapes? So your packaging, like your project description can be an illustrations file. You can draw all of the elements. You can import some photos as elements of your label and live trace and expand them. Just make sure that they look, so I'm gonna move him back. Just make sure they look like they are seamless. in your label. And so now you can really get an idea for how our label is coming together. All right, so let's move over to 
our project description because this lecture has gone a little extra long than it normally does, but I want to make sure I'm showing you some different techniques using some more enhanced treatments, all based on the pen tool still, right? If you're going to do a clipping mask, you have to be able to draw shapes with the pen tool. Uh, more enhanced ways to, I think I would love to have the background of some level of gradient. You know, it would be fun to have some level of gradient with my label. I'm not sure, still thinking about it, but. So let's go over to our description, our project description. And you'll actually see this one is vector drawn. This is actually just a vector drawing of the packaging. We need this, the front panel of your packaging for your project, a product of your choice, right? This is just a product illustration. But remember, we want to make sure it's as professional and real as possible. So you see things like 20 pack, the flavors included, like anything on the packaging. So if you're choosing a product, you should either Google the packaging so you know everything that's on the front of it, or you should use a pad package of something you own so that you can have every element. But look at like the burst on here. So let's just remember that we could do Right. So you see that? I'm just trying to tie all the different things that happen on these packagings. So watch if we just blur this, right? See how it bursts like that? Now watch if I send both of these things to back. Look at how that adds a dimension to the packaging. Right? Maybe I stretch it all the way out. There are so many ways using basic little techniques to really jazz up this thing. Look at how it becomes just a blur if you really blur it. What if I change that to white now? Well, you don't even see it, right? Because, so watch. Now, if I crank it back down, it becomes an element. Maybe that element only exists on the top of my packaging. You see that? There are so many things. That's why it's really great to have some inspiration that you're building off of. What if I move that to the front? And I make it super light. And I squish it down and I drop it on there. I mean, we could make that have a green little burst or something. I mean, there's just so many things. So your out of book project can be your chapter assignments and your out of book project, but I want you to continue practicing the pen tool, start bringing in elements like effects. Let's try, what if we, texturized the iguana. Oh, he's cool. All right. So look at that. Let's start pushing the envelope of some of these techniques and see what we can come up with. It's always best to use something as inspiration 
like a packaging design of something you love and try to replicate some of the elements of the packaging you love for the packaging you want to redesign. So maybe you want to do coffee, but you saw packaging for uh, a coffee flavored uh energy drink and you want your coffee packaging to have some of the elements of the coffee energy drink. Let's see what you come up with for your product illustration this week. I'm going to add a stroke to this just so that you can see my packaging. And this is what you'll be submitting for your project is this little main packaging. We'll use this and convert it into a real life mock-up for your portfolio in portfolio class. You're welcome to apply it to a box photograph in your submission if you wish, but it's certainly not a necessity. So like if I was going to take this, copy and paste, and I'm going to group it, And I'm gonna move it over here. And I'm gonna shrink it down. And so here's the beginning of my mock-up. So let's zoom in. And I'm going to just shear this ever so slightly. I do that and watch what I'm going to do. I'm going to zoom in, object expand appearance, and then I'm going to take my box and zoom in. Trying to match this up to the perspective of my carton. So there we go. And let's zoom in. I have so much in my brain that we could share. And there it is on the carton. And sometimes I, yeah, that looks great. Uh, and so that is not a requirement to make that have perspective on it. That's something we do in portfolio class to make this thing look real, but that is a nice treatment to it. So it can exist over here. So like for portfolio class, you would actually have both of these pages and I would actually trash the third artboard. And this would be your mock up. So, your real world mock up and your label in its finished state. So, I'm going to go ahead and save that. Uh, I know I gave a lot. I kind of walked through my brain process as you're practicing vector tools and seeing how things work. But I wanted for week three to push forward the uh, effects. 3D treatments, the personality that you can push forward in Illustrator with the ability to draw and or the not needing necessarily to draw to create some solutions that are vector-based, but everything here is vector, even that traced photograph. So make sure that your submission is completely vectorized. There shouldn't be any photos in this. Even if you use a photo as an element and you trace it in order to create the effect that you're looking for. And please make sure the panel you create is one that completely has everything that is on the professional front surface or front facing 
uh, side of your packaging. I can't wait to see what you come up with. Keep pushing the envelope. I can see some real digital illustration growth in each one of you, starting in some cases from ground zero and really starting to explore vector-based trawling. Have a great week. I'm going to stop the recording and I'm gonna share the recording in the announcement section for those of you watching later. Um, everyone have a great week. I can't wait to see what you come up with and I hope you enjoyed the interactive lecture this week.